how to turn a small property into a profitable short-term rental. Now, before we go into the different strategies as to how to make this happen, why do people actually stay at Airbnbs? What makes them unique rather than hotels? Well, the two reasons people stay at Airbnb are as follows. Number one, it is something that has exploded since COVID. When we are able to create a great experience in a property that you can only get there and not in a hotel, this is how we create a competitive advantage. For example, imagine you have a two bedroom, one bathroom, single family home that sleeps up to five guests. You could also sleep five guests, maybe in a suite at a hotel, but what can you do in the Airbnb that you can't get in a suite? Well, in a hotel and in a suite, they typically have to share a gym. They typically have to share a game room if there is a game room. They typically have to share a jacuzzi and a pool. Now, every once in a while at an all-inclusive resort, you might find a suite that has a small jacuzzi, but it's kind of rare. But just imagine if you have this two bedroom, one bathroom, single family home with a gym, a game room, a jacuzzi, a pool, a barbecue grill in the backyard. And this experience is something that you can, again, only create at the Airbnb. You cannot get this experience at a hotel, even if it's a suite. This is one of the ways that we are able to create a competitive advantage in how we can get people to stay at our short-term rentals rather than at our hotel. Another thing is you can have to these two bedrooms all under one roof. And that's the other place where we can be competitive with short-term rentals is the pricing. Again, you can fit five people at an Airbnb that rents for maybe 300 a night. Where at a hotel, that suite might cost you $1,200 a night, not including their 22% occupancy fees. So it is still at the very minimum double to stay at a hotel compared to an Airbnb. Now I wanna go over some specific strategies on how to turn small properties into profitable short-term rentals. One thing that you wanna keep in mind is that 80% of Airbnbs around the whole world host one to four people. So again, most of these short-term rentals are hosting and accommodating smaller groups of people, which is a great way to create these unique experiences that I just went over. Now, the second reason, and this is also one of the main reasons why people stay at short-term rentals is because of proximity. What I just talked about, I always refer to as a staycation experience where people can have a great time in the home without needing to leave the home. Meaning you might even have a local, someone from the same neighborhood, the same city, or just someone from the same state that is making a drive and they wanna stay somewhere in the same city just to get away and have a staycation experience. They're not necessarily going to a conference or a concert or an event. They're just booking your home because of the experiences and the amenities that you have for them to be able to have a great experience with their friends, family, or coworkers. Now, when you combine both of those things, the staycation experience and the proximity, all within the same property, the same location, this is how you are able to create the best, if not one of the best properties in the area where you are able to maintain a really high occupancy above 80%, and make double whatever you pay in rent or in a mortgage. So if your rent or mortgage is 3,000, this strategy allows you to make $6,000 or more in most areas. I'm not gonna say everywhere because I don't know where you're from, but at least where I'm operating, my students are operating, we are definitely able to hit those targets. The most important thing that you have to look into before finding a great property with great amenities and a great location is making sure that you can actually get a permit because if you can't get a permit, then this business is gonna be short-lived. You don't wanna go through all the time, energy, right? Blood, sweat, and tears of ordering all the furniture, appliances, decor, supplies, getting the photography, creating the welcome books, creating the listing for your Airbnb to be shut down six months later because you never got a permit. My recommendation is go on to Google and type building department in the city of Austin. Whatever city it is that you wanna launch in, call the building department, ask them what their short-term rental ordinance is and you know how much does it take to get a permit like what is the cost how long does it take what is the process what are the requirements my recommendation is only launch in cities where you can actually obtain a permit a few other things that you want to keep in mind is you want to make sure you hire a cleaner my recommendation is don't hire a cleaning company right they're going to have their own entity insurance policies they got to pay payroll tax they're going to have all kinds of expenses because they're a large company. And one of the things I don't like about that is because their fees are so high, they're gonna charge you 30 to 60% more 
than if you just hire a person directly. The second thing I don't like about hiring a big company is they might send different people because if person A who cleaned your property three days ago is not available, they're gonna send another person. And one of the things that you wanna create is consistency. You wanna make sure that your listing is cleaned and left exactly as your pictures reflect because you want your marketing to be accurate. Whatever you are marketing as far as your pictures, your description, when your guests arrive, they should feel like, wow, this is exactly what I saw online. And if you have different people cleaning it, they might not keep up with that consistency. Cleaning is the absolute most important thing when it comes to having a short-term rental. You wanna make sure that your property is spotless because if it's not, if there's like roaches or ants or it's just dirty, when your guests arrive, they can contact you right away and say, hey, you know what, this property is dirty, I want a refund, we're leaving, we don't feel comfortable. And if they can prove it, guess what, you will have to give them a full refund because the property is not meeting the standards that Airbnb is committed to. By the way, if you guys are enjoying this video, make sure you guys hit that subscribe button and turn on the notification bell. The next thing is you wanna make sure you have a good maintenance person because guess what? As with all the turnover that comes from short-term rentals, on average, we have four to eight check-ins per month, right? And there's gonna be turnover and there's gonna be maintenance from time to time, maybe some leaks or minor repairs or every once in a while, I don't know, you might get a hole in the wall. Maybe someone slams the door, the doorknob hits you know, the wall and makes a hole, whatever. There's gonna be maintenance. So you wanna have two to three good handymen that are on call and available whenever you need somebody to handle something during your checkout and check-in time, which usually for me, it's like 10 to three or 11 to three. That gives us four to five hours to make sure that we handle any maintenance issues. By the way, if you guys are liking this video, make sure you guys hit that like button. It does take a lot of work to uh, put these videos together. So I would really appreciate that like in advance. Last but not least, we just talked about making the bag. Now we want to talk about keeping the bag, right? Uh, because at the end of the day, it's not about how much you make. It's about how much you keep. You want to make sure you have a good CPA and I recommend that you get a specialist, a real estate CPA that specializes in real estate taxes so that you keep as much of the income that you generate. So again, getting the CPA is going to help you learn how to maximize your write-offs, your deductions so that you can lower your tax liability and legally by following the tax code and following the playbook that's been created for entrepreneurs. You can pay little or maybe even zero taxes on all that revenue, again, by following the tax code. That being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure you guys comment below with any questions you have. Uh, check out the links in the description and check out one of my other videos here and I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.